Right. I think a theme that is very much emerging today is in reach. If anyone was at panel eight, they'll know what we're talking about. Um, I've, I'm self plagiarising there because I think I put it quite well and I thought, well, why not? Um, I think there's a real issue, there always has been, with special collection services not being well enough known and understood and connected internally. It was ever thus. I remember when I came into special collections in the 90s, you'd hear very prestigious people saying, they don't use us, they don't understand us. People come and drill in our rooms, they don't use us, they don't consider what we have. It was always a, a thing that people were worried about, understandably. Um, and I think the issues remain the same, but it's much more it's much more of a problem than it used to be. Because at one time they could carry on about their business and if they weren't well understood internally, it wasn't a great problem. But in the current climate, if special collections are not well understood internally, they're at risk. Um, they could be they might not be seen as being relevant to the mission of the institution, they could be at risk of being closed, and opportunities are being lost. I think the whole thing in the impact session earlier in panel eight, and I do apologise if you weren't there, in, researchers are not making use of the resources on their own doorsteps because they don't understand them or they don't know what they are. And I think everybody is missing out, the institution is missing out, the researchers and the service. So I think there's a real pressure to get better at internal connection, in reach, as we like to call it. The problem is, is that that's not easy, because if it was easy, we'd do it, we, and it would be fine. So I've put some really tacky pictures up to show you why this might be difficult. Um, there's a huge issue around perception of people's perception of us, if they've even heard of us, if, they, if they're aware we exist, which is in itself a barrier, their understanding of what we do and what we're for. Um, and I think the fact that there are books and it is dusty, it isn't dusty, but they might think it's dusty. There's all these sort of misperceptions, particularly if you're dealing with people from um, outside the humanities and the arts, people from a social sciences background or a sciences background, or people who are not academics at all, because I think connecting with them is vital, is absolutely essential, because... Universities are not just about the academic stuff, they're about everybody, every member of the institution, and everybody has connections to make with you. Um, so there's those really problematic perceptions, and I think the, the picture on the right is very much what people probably imagine we, we are like and what we do in our, in our shelves. So it's nobody's got time to do anything about this, because nobody's got time to engage. Everybody... I don't know about you, whether you're in universities or not, but I bet you're super busy, and I bet all your colleagues are super busy. And email, 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 everything's a big rush. There isn't time to go and explore something that might be awesome just because it might be awesome. You just get through the day, you just do what you've got to do. So I think that gives us what I've pointed to at the bottom, which is a, a tangle. It's a bit of a tangle. How do we untangle it? I don't have all the answers, but I wanted to tell you about a thing I've been involved in in the past year that has really helped my service and me connect internally. Bradford Leader. Um, it's a leadership programme developed by the University of Bradford because the university recognises that these are really, really difficult and turbulent times in higher education. I don't think anyone wants to disagree with that, do they? No. Um, really, we don't know what's going to happen. We know it's going to be difficult student numbers under pressure, finance under pressure, leaders are needed. And the definition in this project of leaders is not just the person who stands up at the front and is the big boss. It's anyone who has influence over others. You don't have to be a line manager or a budget holder. You're just somebody who's trying to influence others to do things. And I think that probably everybody here is a leader, that you have a role to play in encouraging certain behaviours and certain things to go on. So Bradford Leader, it's a very classical uh, leadership programme. It involves, uh, you're split into cohorts uh, for sort of new managers, experienced managers and senior managers. Uh, there are overnight sessions in the university's beautiful heat and mount premises, which you can see that's a picture of the door. It's lovely. It's off the main campus. It's a beautiful Victorian villa with a beautiful garden. So it's instantly... You, know, you can take a deep breath because you're not, no one can find you. Um, and you do a lot of workshops, a lot of overnight stays, a lot of very traditional sort of leadership training. And I'm not here to talk about that because leadership training is what leadership training is. 
Um, that's not kind of the point I'm making here. There was an, a massive incidental bonus of being involved in this programme that was not to do, strictly speaking, with the content of the programme. I was involved in the developing, which I've, I've underlined to help you see it. That is kind of the middle managers. So it's full of basically middle-aged people who've been around since forever and who know what's what. And most of us were very cynical and we had a lot of laughs about things you can imagine. Um, it was quite a nice mixture of people, but we were all of a certain age, shall we say, with some young, a few younger folk there. But mostly it was very much the kind of the people who are the, the, the sort of backbone of the university in a way. Um, and it was a very, very interesting experience. The thing that really stood out about the, the, the programme was a thing called SIGS, which I'll keep saying SIG, Strategic Impact Group. The th in our cohort consisted of, I think, about 16 people, and we were split into two SIGs of about eight. You see, I can do maths. And we had to all choose what's described as a wicked issue. I don't know if you've come across the term wicked issue. It's like a big mess. Climate change is one, apparently. But it's, it's something that is a problem that you can't even quite define the problem, let alone work out how you're going to deal with it. There's all sorts of thread, threads and strands and things going on. It's big and messy. Many things in universities are big and messy like that. And the, the wool, I think, illustrates it nicely. And the point being made about picking one of these issues was that these are the things we need to tackle. And you can't do it in a traditional problem-solving way. You've kind of got to have a dip into it and try things and do new stuff. The one we chose was bridging the gap between town and gown. And I must draw your attention to that, which is a pie that I made, and that is the coat of arms of Bradford. And it's work overcomes all, which I think I agree with. So, sorry, just get, get, kudos for the pie. It's, it's, it's actually a Bakewell tart, but it's sort of Bradford-y flavoured. It came third in, a, in our, in our bake-off at work. <laughs> you should have seen the winner. It was awesome. I think it was made of plastic. So I think the, the reason we chose this issue was that the group felt that people at the university were not enough connected with the city. A lot of people, particularly on higher grades, are not necessarily going to be staying all that long. They've got several years at the university and they might go somewhere else. They drive in, they park their car, they go to work, they go home, they work at home. Um, the public transport users are a bit more engaged because we walk through the city to get to work, but most people are not. So we felt there was a huge issue there. And what I think was interesting is that when we found out what all the other SIGs from all the other cohorts had chosen, everybody either was looking at this issue or they were looking at internal communications in the university. So I think we're kind of agreed on the fact that there are these big problems for our university, and I suspect most other universities have similar ones. So the SIGs were totally up to us. They weren't programmed. It was like we had to get together and decide how we were going to tackle these things. So we had various meetings and we tried some stuff. That looks like the seaside, doesn't it? That is Bradford. We have a big pool, and people go there in the summer, and it's like the sea, and it's so beautiful. Um, it's, and this is, this is one of the really lovely things that we now have. It's, it's a real attraction for people. So we tried various things. So we did a bit of... This, this was me. I wanted to do a sort of something quite strategic. So I did a bit, we did a bit of investigating about volunteering and what the university support for volunteering was. We arranged a meet-up in town, but it, the, the take-up wasn't huge. It was nice. It was a nice event. I didn't go because I'd broken my shoulder, so I have an excuse. But um, it, it, didn't, it didn't attract that many people. We, some people tried to volunteer at the local food bank, but they had far too many volunteers, and they said we didn't need any more volunteers, so that, that didn't work out. So we kept sort of nibbling away at different stuff, and like, well, what are we going to do? We've got to do a thing. And then we found some new friends, and I think it's all about collaboration. We found out that the Bradford Council has a very similar scheme of Bradford Council leader-type people, which I thought was rather exciting. Um, and the things that these leaders have got up to, they do all sorts of things. So they organise a dragon boat festival. They're the long, the long sort of narrow boats you see on Chinese rivers with dragons on their fronts. So they organise that. And they also organised um, a thing where you, there's apparently a record for doing that in a great big line of people. It's sort of like a heart shape. And we did the biggest and we, we got the record for it. So the entire square was full of people doing that, which was lovely. Love Bradford. So that's the kind of thing the council 
group were doing. So they, they were pretty impressive. They, they've organised a lot. So we got together and we did an unconference. Now, I don't know if you can actually read any of the things that we've got on our unconference plan, um, but it's all talking about the sort of issues that we face in the city, like tidiness and behaviour and social isolation, all the sorts of things we've been talking about all day. And what we did is a load of people from the university and a load of people from the council got together and we had a really good chat about all these issues and people pitched ideas and we all bought into it. And I think some really interesting connections were made because the university and the council have never had that kind of meeting before. So I thought that was pretty good. Felt really, really positive about that. Um, my special role in that was I provided lots of pictures of, of Bradford of Yore, um, which was nice. So we sort of put it into a little bit of historical context, because I expect you were thinking, where, where do the collections come into this? They don't hugely, but that's OK. Um, they're kind of there when they're needed. So the other thing that we've kind of ended up with is, is, a, is, a, is a sense of community. Within the university and to some extent with our council colleagues, there's a sense that there's a group of people who are Bradford leaders and we connect with each other through various digital and real life spaces. For instance, I cannot walk around campus without seeing one of my Bradford leader chums, which is brilliant. And we, we, know, we, we know a lot more people individually and collectively. Um, we have a Yammer collaborate thing. We have a various other collaborate things. We have a Slack channel. We have all sorts. Um, and people pop in and out of these things and connect with each other. And the university also uses it as a way to tap into different groups of people. Like I've just been invited to, as a Bradford leader, to go and speak to new staff inductions and I'm like yeah because of course what I do there is I'm giving out my postcards and saying come see us because we've got old stuff so you know suddenly that's a it's a really good in into things that you wouldn't necessarily get through any other route so it's, it's very very productive so I've already touched on a lot of the benefits of this scheme that I've found um, the one that really stands out for me is the connecting in a deep and rich way because being involved in this program gave us permission to talk to people and engage with them. And some of the exercises in the leadership program were quite challenging. There was one where you had to turn your back on the group. You had to tell the group your problem and then turn your back on them. And they had a bit of a chat about what you could do and then turn around and they'd, they'd suggest some ways that you could progress. And it was actually very moving because people exposed their deepest pain. Well, I, I exaggerate, but not much. You know, and you got a real insight into people's problems, and you could try and offer them ways forward, and to encourage, uh, to sort of. And I think you start to get a sense of them as as whole people, and a sense of what the problems they have. So, because so often it's just transactional. You know, have you got a picture of a thing? Yes, here it is. You know, I need this doing because it's broken. Fix that. You know, it's all, it, and it's it's just a rich relationship, which at one time you probably got by just hanging out with people, but there isn't really time now. So. This exercise gave us that connection. Um, it also gave us a lot of other things which we've popped up there. Um, the flags are because there was an idea that you pick up a flag, you see a thing that's a problem, and you choose to pick up the flag and deal with it, even though it's not your job. Or you might go, I don't want to pick up that flag. I've got too much on. That's not me. And it's kind of having permission to act or not act. Because I think our environment is so turbulent that if we don't give people permission to act even if it's not their job nothing will ever get done because your job structures lag behind the reality of what's going on and I think having that kind of permission was very useful. Um, one really really useful thing is that one of the people in, in my cohort is a, is a very uh, major person in um, estates to do with roof projects. So we're now having our, our extension re-roofed because it leaks, and I know very well the person who's in charge. So he understands our concerns, and I understand his concerns, and we understand each other's words. So we have a very, very good connection, and I'm really happy with how this project is going because we're all communicating effectively. And I think the Bradford Lee thing has really helped with that. I could go on. There are many more examples of how this is directly beneficial to our service and our collections. But it's not all, it's not all easy at all. Um, there are many things that make this a difficult thing to do. Um, for example, it's an expensive thing for the university to offer. 
um, and it's very, very time consuming. I put in six days of the formal programme plus a lot of time on the SIG and I do feel that other aspects of the job struggled in that respect. So I think it's not something, it's not easy, you know, there's a lot to do. I think also it's personally very challenging in terms of some of the, the content of the course, you know, you have to sort of put yourself into positions you're not comfortable with, which is a, a challenge. Um, the little wavy person is because there's quite a high attrition rate. Um, a couple of people have moved on. Somebody was made redundant, which was very sad. So you, you're not eventually the, the groups will diminish. And hopefully the university will keep offering this kind of programme and will keep recruiting new Bradford leaders. But it may not. It's an expensive thing to do. And I don't know how sustainable it is. We were hoping to do another conference this autumn, but I'm afraid we haven't. So it might be in the spring. Or maybe we'll do something different. Maybe the connections we have are sufficient. But... I think even if we don't do anything else, I think we've still made a load of really exciting connections and thoughts that we can take forward into the future. So what, are you, what can you take forward from this? You know, what, what would I like to share with you? I think it's about being creative about in-reach. It's about taking opportunities even if it doesn't look you know, obvious what the connection is. It isn't all about the connections, particularly in a small institution. Sometimes it's about getting to know you and your team, if you have a team, and what you're about. Because I think if people know you personally, they see the context of your problems. Oh, that will be a problem for Alison because, because of this. And they'll kind of see it as a human thing rather than just some kind of weird, different thing that's going to cause them problems. And I think it's also about a little, you know, without doing huge amounts of work for nothing. It's about putting a little bit in to get more out and work, trying to work together, but taking every opportunity to boost what the university is doing and boost what colleagues are doing to support each other. Because I think these are very difficult times and I think genuinely working together and offering support wherever you can is so important. And I think it's, it's that sort of... It's all the things we've been saying in all the sessions, you know, proactive, opportunistic risk management and being open to new ideas as much as possible and that I think I hope you can see that I said Bradford I wear that little badge all the time and I wave it at people because I do I think it's a fantastic place to work and I'm very proud of it and hopefully we're all helping to make things a little bit better for everybody and thank you to the kind people with the clip art and thank you to all of you for listening and I hope you found that engaging <laughs>